But I'm going to turn to Mike Robson now, the Syria country representative for FAO. He's been with FAO for more than 25 years, serving in a number of roles, uh, previously including the FAO representative in Bangladesh and in the office of the Deputy Director General for Programmes. Mike, if I could pass to you now. Thank you. Um, good. Thanks very much. Um, I'm going to talk about, uh, uh, with a slight uh, change of pace, I'm going to talk about uh, sustainable livelihoods and uh, resilience uh, in Syria. Um, resilience can be defined in terms of people's ability to accumulate and diversify assets. The resilience of the most vulnerable, their ability to respond to future shocks, depends on them having a range of livelihood strategies to fall back, fall back on, and that, that backed by assets. In Syria, FAO is, is working on building sustainable livelihoods under the HRP Humanitarian Response Plan Pillar 3. This involves the distribution of inputs such as seeds, fertilizer, feedstuffs and equipment, and training to farmers, but also some restoration of local on-farm water management infrastructure to support irrigation, because without irrigation there can be no farming and food production. Underlying this work is a consideration of how these activities will result in improved livelihood outcomes, while ensuring social, economic and environmental sustainability. Prior to the crisis in Syria, natural resources, specifically groundwater, were being overexploited in some areas. Climate change was a growing concern in the centre and eastern parts of the country after several years of drought, and there were concerns about overgrazing in parts of the central Badia zone. At the same time, the country was moving slowly to modernise the rural economy, having operated a system of central planning of production for many years specifically for so-called strategic crops, such as wheat, barley, lentils, and so on, and sectors such as cattle and small ruminants. Meanwhile, other sectors, such as vegetable production and poultry, were already in the hands of small and medium-sized businesses in the private sector. So, so where are we now? The current situation, agriculture now forms the largest part of the Syrian economy. It contributed less than 20% to GDP before the crisis, but now it's the biggest sector. And it's the main contributor to the livelihoods of millions living in rural areas. But the sector faces huge challenges. Farmers have lost assets during periods of displacement or insecurity and conflict, things that have been damaged or stolen. On farm, water management has been damaged or become degraded after years out of use all across the country. And large numbers of pumps have been stolen, taken for their scrap value. Where conflicts have been most intense, the land and building Buildings need restoration. Farmers even have to travel di great distances to get to their land, in some cases 25, 30 kilometers a day. The break in farming means that farmers have lost continuity, where, for instance, they previously saved their seed for use in following seasons, and now they need help to get started again. Meanwhile, the price of farming inputs is rising and has been worsened by the current financial crisis and the COVID-19 response, and the quality of inputs is generally poor. Across the board, FAO is working to address these challenges for the most vulnerable, particularly those returning from displacement, women-headed households, and those with the smallest land holdings. And I'll give just three uh, quick examples of the kind of work that we're doing. Wheat, wheat seed distribution, the restoration of irrigation, and food processing. The first of these on, on distributing wheat seed. We've, we've given out seed to farmers, cereal seed, wheat seed across the country, but we're also supporting seed producer groups who are growing wheat specifically for seed for distribution to farmers in Aleppo, Deir Ezzor, and other governorates. Over the, the length of the crisis, 130,000 households have received seed from FAO uh, since, that, since the beginning of that time. Just taking one example and giving you, showing you how, a little bit how we work, in northeast rural Hama during December 2019, we distributed seed to around 200 families in the villages of Hamra and Suron, the majority of whom had recently returned from one to two years of displacement during the heaviest period of fighting. Beneficiaries were selected according to vulnerability criteria, those with the smallest land holdings, the women-headed households, and those with disabled people in their, fa in their families in the household. And they were given 200 kilograms of seed, which is enough to plant one hectare. That's enough to produce enough wheat for, to feed a family for one year and have a surplus to sell. The most important thing is that these farmers will now be able to save some of that production for use as seed for future, future, future uh, uh, planting seasons in the coming years. The fact is that the 200 of the families that we helped were less than 10% of the total number of families and all were objectively vulnerable to some extent. Second topic on irrigation. I mean, irrigation is the key to sustainable agriculture in Syria. 
We've undertaken studies to establish the damage to the irrigation system across the country by doing on the ground surveys, using remote sensing to, to identify and validate which schemes are out of operation and broader studies to assess the natural resource availability. We have a team of specialist engineers backed by local retired irrigation specialists across the country, supporting our own projects and providing a service to other agencies and NGOs working on irrigation. Our projects focus on restoring local infrastructure on farm to enable farms to access the water they need, whether it's coming from groundwater wells or through low lift pumps from the river system, such as the Euphrates. In all cases, consideration is given to the availability of water resources to ensure the environmental sustainability. The operation and maintenance and management of restored equipment, including the irrigation schedules, is in the hands of a local water users association made up of the group of local farmers at that location. Some recent examples include the use of solar energy to pump groundwater in Cunetra, an area which is particularly rich in water resources, where the wells that we've restored originally benefited only one family, but have now been extended to groups of up to 20 families to use for supplementary irrigation in fruit orchards and vegetable production. We've also done uh, small scale rainwater harvesting in Dara, an area where groundwater has been overexploited before and during the crisis, again for use in household vegetable production. And we've done low lift pumps along the river systems to irrigate land adjacent to the river. For instance, six villages and 15 locations in and around Derazor, uh, reaching three and a half thousand hectares for cereals and vegetables. Overall, over time, we've, we've restored irrigation to around about 56,000 hectares of land over the last three years. The third example on food processing uh, really is another example of resilience and social cohesion. And this is work with rural women to encourage food processing and the development of micro enterprises. The number of women headed households have, has increased significantly due, due, due to the crisis with emigration, conscription and injuries to men during the conflict. FAO has provided training and equipment to women's groups across the country on food sector micro enterprise development, including installation of food processing facilities at around 20 locations. Training has included production and quality standards, but also finance, bookkeeping, marketing. Uh, we've also undertaken study tours and coaching and mentoring. In summary, sustainable livelihoods depend on the sustainable use of natural resources and the economic viability of the activity. Social cohesion comes from working with groups and providing opportunities for gainful employment. Thank you very much. Mike, thank you very much for sharing those thoughts and we look forward to exploring them in a little bit more detail uh, during the panel session and the Q&A coming up.